CQB is a major driving force in our game. Put a crowd of hyper players into an indoor arena with barriers all around, and quickly everyone is rushing for hits. CQB is the easiest way to get instant action once the game begins. And if you've seen any of my CQB gameplays, then you know that the diversity of replicas players use can be awesome to see. So I thought that CQB would be a great place to return to the Airsoft Top series. This is the series where we take a look at just a few of the creative Airsoft replicas the world has to offer. Literally thousands of replicas have been submitted to this series to compete for the top spot. If you're looking for some inspiration for your next builds, then this would be the place for you. So thanks to SS Airsoft, where a lot of the CQB footage you'll see in this video was filmed in Atlanta, Georgia, and GNG Armament, who are always sending awesome stuff my way to show off to all of you, this is the Top 10 CQB Airsoft Builds. Oh, but are we going to get a new shotguns countdown or a new loadouts countdown? Yes, this is my splash back into the countdown series, so keep an eye out for more Airsoft Top Series episodes soon. Just be sure to subscribe now if you haven't already so we can break 400,000 subscribers as fast as possible so you don't miss those countdowns when they drop. But let's kick this thing off with the 10th spot with some mercy. Shoguns is taking this spot today because I've heard just how much people think that professional builders should be in their own segment. This workshop is capable of taking multiple top spots over the course of this series. But for this episode, they have this tiny ST M249 to flex. An M249 for CQB? Really? Yeah, anything is possible in Hong Kong. And that's evident when you look at all the amazing stuff that Shoguns has put together. To pull this build off, a custom short fluted outer barrel, a 45 degree offset side mount, tank style muzzle brake, and concealed gas regulator had to be crafted along with a rail adapter for grips and lights, or even for launchers. I also see that custom stock adapter. A normal M249, or even a para model, can be tricky to work with in close quarters games, but something like this should do the trick, with or without a stock. It's not very subtle, but who needs subtlety when you can have suppressive fire in your pocket? I've said it before, but if I ever get the chance to go to Hong Kong, the Shogun's Workshop is the first place I'd want to go. I mean, really, if you've seen any of these episodes before, then you know what kind of stuff that Shogun's can do. But next at the ninth spot, Callsign Horus on Instagram turned in a good looking ANK ACR. A platform that I would hope to see more of in the future. From Ohio, this builder went about downgrading the mainspring to an M100 so he could take this icon into CQB games, but he also added in an ASG 20K motor. As for the external look that I'm liking a lot, we can see an AIMSports 200 lumens LED flashlight on the left side, a Magpul foregrip, which makes a lot of sense on this replica. Then there's a Matrix SR25K flash hider and a knockoff EOTech on top to round off this Mon Warfare 2 replica. Or do you remember this more from Mon Warfare 3? Altogether, the budget spent was $375, which really isn't that bad. I just hope maybe that we see more ACRs someday, and that includes gas blowback models and AEGs. I like the platform in Airsoft, and I hope a lot of you do too. So thank you Callsign Horus for your submission. Last up for this section, I have a returning submitter for you, the builder of this interesting high kappa. Catalyst Skyweebsoft returns with what I call the monster. I have some creative naming skills, I know. From Wisconsin, this setup was put together because I built this mostly as a how cursed can I get project. Now, although Weebsoft is mainly a speed softer, he does a lot of real steel tactical stuff. Airsoft is his way of training while still having fun with it all, and I really like that. Looking at what we have here, Weebsoft said the body is a salvage combat machine with a tap drop stock and a PDW stock from a classic army X9 at the end of it. A fake RMR with a Lancer Tactical Riser sits up top while the waifu keychain changes with the season. Very appropriate, might I add. The handguard is a modified black variable Kyle amplifier as you can tell. But what about the parts inside? 
Well, internally, this Speedsoft build is featuring a Polar Star jack that's partnered up with a PDI 6.01 barrel with a pro end hop up with a flat hopped green bucking and a speed trigger. Altogether, you're looking at a sub $500 build since everything besides the jack and handguard were salvaged from previous builds. We've seen some builds like this before, like the Arizona Green Tea build from Lamb Chops, so it was only a matter of time before something like this would make it into the community. Now we just need a Red Bull version with the proper paint job. This is probably the most radical build setup for the Speed Softer crowd that you'll see in this countdown, but don't worry. I've got some plans for another countdown soon so we can see some more of the high kappas that dominate the CQB arenas. You won't see any pistols in the ranking this time, but they're coming. I promise you that. It is time for a couple shotguns and an AK. That's a good mix, right? Well, let's start it off with the Tokyo Marui AA-12. Do you remember when the AA-12 was the most requested replica? Now it's all about the G11 or the AN94, since the VFC MPX is shipping out to stores all around the world. But back to this $1,000 AA-12 from Warren of Canada. As you can tell, this shoddy was converted to HPA with the help of a Polar Star F2 and a custom nozzle and Wolverine nozzle adapter. This was done to go back and forth between field and CQB and to increase its longevity. The conversion to HPA also gave Warren the ability to make the trigger responses much more snappy compared to when it was still an EEG. On the inside, Warren added three stainless steel 383mm Type 4 barrels with flat hop arms. Then outside, a PCU AA12 trace unit will make tracer BBs glow three at a time. The front and rear sight, as you can tell, were deleted, so an AK rail bolted onto the left side of the gearbox and a Bell OMO PK01 VS optic could take their place. The last of the mods were the rails attached to the handguard for lights, grips, and for the pressure pad for the drum magazine that Warren uses with this Marui. The TMAA-12 was already an interesting beast of a try shot, but if you want to see the whole process of how Warren decked it out, then be sure to check the description for a link to his video over it. If you're a very tech-minded person, then you'll love it. But Perky has taken the sixth spot for a different popular shoddy. Just look at this stubby Striker 12 from the UK. Running on PPS CO2 shells that its owner had many of for his other shotguns, this came in a two-tone orange that had to be dyed to get this look. Sadly, after getting the Striker 12, the plastic barrel had snapped at the muzzle's end. And whilst waiting for a replacement metal barrel to turn up, Perky got slightly inebriated and he had an epiphany and woke the next morning to find the broken barrel had been sawn off and turned down at the end to fit an Arctac shotgun tracer in a very short barreled shotgun configuration. He then noticed that a pair of holes on the top of the receiver were already tapped. So he fitted a section of M-Lock rail with the finest of Chinese airsoft clone optics. That does mean that the stock won't fold without removing the optic, but when you do, you essentially have a 12-shot shotgun revolver, which is perfect for a tight CQB sight, especially in the dark. And to explain why this entire build was put together, you can sum it up with one word, booze. In all seriousness though, Perky has a bad habit of seeing something, having some small idea ping in his head and not being able to carry on until it's no longer taking up free real estate in his mind. The cost for this build mounted up quick from first ordering, then shipping, customs fees, alone the Striker 12 Gel Blaster took $500 out of Perky's wallet which was more annoying once Octagon Airsoft brought in their own version of it at a much cheaper price. He ended up getting one of those as well, since, after all, Perkins does have two hands. So you're telling me he actually runs two of these? But that's two scatter guns down, so where's that AK I mentioned? Well, at number 5, Naru from Puerto Rico has a $900 GHK AKS 74U that I can't wait to run down. Now I love the AKS-74U, you can cover it in rail kits and modern accessories, but I'll still want to handle it, so you can bet that I was happy to see this one submitted. 
Naru already owns a GHK RPK, so he needed a CQB variant. Plus, since he's on lockdown at home, he had all the time he needed to work on this without any stress. To keep this GHK consistent and accurate, Naru added on a Hephaestus Seer, a TDC mod on the hop-up, including a Mad Bull Black Python and a Maple Leaf 70 degree blue bucking. And if you like the looks, then get your notepads out, because you'll need a Hephaestus Steel Barrel, a Zenico B11, a Hephaestus MCX Stock Adapter, an Airsoft Artisan MCX Stock, a real Bakelite Grip, and the original top handguard, with a WAD SN flashlight to get the same visuals. The world could use a lot more gas blowback love, so get creative and try something new if you haven't yet. This is just one awesome gas blowback that I'm happy to have on this countdown, but I would like to see one of yours make it one day. So try out a gas blowback if you're ready to have some extra fun with Airsoft. You will not regret it. From Halo to a brutal M249, and even this shell-ejecting APS Cam 870 from Dion of the UK. These are going to be good. Now let's state the obvious. Shell-ejecting replicas are pretty terrible. They normally don't have range, any kind of power, consistency, and practicality is downright awful. And yet the APS Cam 870s broke that mold. And this custom build from the UK is freaking awesome. Just look at it. But something that doesn't look good would be the $4,600 price tag associated with it. Making this, from my memory, the second most expensive build ever showcased on this long running series. But how can an airsoft replica cost more than a lot of people's first cars? Well, a lot of that blame can go to the FPR full steel kit, which includes the magazine tube, receiver, barrel, and bolt carrier, which took $2,000 by itself to get a hold of. Its owner, Dion, also replaced the original wood furniture for real Remington 870 Wingmaster furniture and a police overfolding stock with a magazine extension of 7 plus 1, which is topped off with a real 870 front sling mount. Inside, Dion had to hand machine a few parts, like the carrier dog follower, hammer follower, and the firing pin, just to get it all to work with all the external parts he added on. Luckily, he has numerous spare parts to keep this pump action going for decades, and 179 shells to keep track of, which Dion has also upgraded with LPS polyurethane O-rings. When I asked him why he put such a build together, he responded with, I put this build together because you don't see many Cam 870s in the UK nor do you see many full steel ones as only around 10 have ever been made. It's also great fun to shoot, and for me, it's the definition of an airsoft shotgun. Just seeing this APS eject shells is a treat for sure, and I bet it feels like the real thing in every way. I love airsoft shotties, and I just hope that we get something like this whenever a company decides to re-release a SPAS-12 on the market. Make it gas, and make it as close to the real thing as possible. Please. You'll get my money if you do. Then Northern Ireland is making an appearance up next at the third spot with Reese and his SEMA AKS-74U. It started like this, and this is how it's going now, after about a thousand dollars was thrown at it. Made because Reese was getting a little bored of the M4 platform, he needed a little change, so how about a little close to mid-range monster to sling plastic with? To keep it accurate, a Prometheus 6.02 inner barrel and a Tokimuri hop-up bucking and nub were used. And for power, Reese added a Gate Titan and converted the connections to Dean's. It looks like the Gate Titan is still doing what it normally does by being one of the most popular FETs out there. The rest of the mods were then done on the outside. If you like that handguard, well then you'll need an LCT B11 and B19. Then you'll want a SEMA Zenico DTK2 clone muzzle brake that you can see was added at the end of the barrel, along with a clone EOTech on top of the railed AKS-74U dust cover. Other SEMA parts were added, like the Zykov stock, the slim grip, enhanced bolt handle, and 74 style mid-cap magazines that have been equipped with Maple Leaf Superfeed springs. You'll also need an Element D-Bell E Mark II, 
a 5KU, Zenico PK-6 grips, the Magpul Zykov cheek riser, and Combat Union Magwell funnel, along with the snakeskin paint job, to then get something like this. Just seeing something like this makes me wish that we could see more AKs in the CQB arenas. AKSs and PP-19s would do pretty well, but I would also like to see people try their skills with full barreled models. I mean, I once saw a guy at Project N1 in SoCal run with an RPK, while another dude alongside him ran a GNG Armin SSG-1. You know, I just like seeing variety. On a totally different spectrum, we have something that looks like it belongs on stage with Gore. Bring in Tommy from Sweden because he's taking up the runner-up spot for not taking no as an answer. This thing is freaking brutal, and so is his entire friend group. Tommy was told it's impossible to play CQB slash CQC indoors with an LMG because of the weight and length. He said no to that whole idea, and he built a setup to prove it, but he got mocked for not having the dedicated sling for his M249, so he got himself a chain instead. Problem solved. But this isn't just a classic army M249 saw with some attachments. Inside, Tommy overhauled this entire support platform. With the short stroke steel tooth piston, Sistema high speed gears, Sistema high speed motor, an upgraded trigger switch, and upgraded wiring to keep everything turning at a constant high speed. And it's been 13 years since he put it all together, so those parts are pretty much bulletproof by this point. Then comes the externals list, which is longer than the classic Army M203 that is attached onto the rails that he also added onto the handguard. He had to delete the vehicle mount and shorten the barrel to make that all work out. Along with that, Tommy threw on a surefire strobe light with a pressure plate, a no-name flashlight slash laser combo that's weak enough for those times strobe is not necessary, but you need to find your way around, and that also has a pressure plate as well. Then he has an M4 carry handle as an extra grip, a four times flipped aside red dot sight, a third front grip behind the M203 that he moves to the left side from time to time, and one last green laser for hip fire purposes. This makes for a monstrous CQB setup that you can build entire games around. Actually, if you see the replicas that his team run, you could probably do the same with any of them individually. I like the Sistema parts, the brutal vibes that he added with the chain and the other aesthetics, and the loadout he kits himself with when he works with a thing that he was told was impossible to use in CQB. Here in America, we love our high kappas like Landon does. You'll see high kappas everywhere over here, along with tiny M4s and some Action Army AAP-01s from time to time. But what I like about European Airsoft altogether is that they just use anything. I don't even think there's a meta for CQB from the videos I watch. The diversity of replicas is high, and I love seeing all the stuff that pops up. For me, it's like going to a really good car meet. You've got some modern Mustangs and Corvettes, along with some Toyota 86s, but there's a bunch of Datsuns, FD, RX-7s, some muscle cars here and there, and even quirky stuff from the 70s and 80s sprinkled about. I should probably wrap this up. I'm just trying to say, Thank you, Tommy, for submitting your M249. So after ACRs and Monster Can M4s, AA-12s and AKs, we find ourselves here at the top spot. I love making this series, so I'm happy that I had the time to make this episode. And if you liked it, then hit that like button down below or subscribe now if you haven't already. I greatly appreciate having you all here so I can show you more of what the world of Airsoft has to offer. Either that being from Hong Kong, Puerto Rico, Sweden, or from West Virginia. That's where we find our top spot holder for this episode. Because once this product of love was submitted, the polls themselves knew he had stolen the show. Everyone welcome the mangy mutt and his MA40AR. Every Halo fan is staring at their screens with a lot more attention right now. I love gaming inspired builds. If it's Call of Duty, Warhammer, Battlefield, Halo, anything gaming is welcomed here for all the creativity and hard work that goes into those builds. And that's why this AR from the Mangy Mutt is here at the top spot. For the base rifle, the Mutt used a classic army Nemesis Mark II ETU that was completely gutted and given a complete internal makeover. 
That makeover includes a VFC Avalon Quick Change gearbox with a Perun version 2 hybrid MOSFET, an ASG 30K Infinity motor, an SHS 12 to 1 gear set with an SHS piston and metal rack, SHS cylinder head, and a proper shim job and AOE correction. The rest of the gearbox after that was left alone. As for the externals, the base classic army body had to be brutally butchered and chopped up beyond recognition. Charging handle, dummy forward assist, dummy bolt release, basically any parts that even remotely stuck out more than a few millimeters on the receiver had to go. To get that right look of the MA-40, a Nerf limited edition official MA-40 Halo Blaster was used. So a lot of modifications had to be done to both the actual rifle and Nerf Blaster itself to get everything to fit properly. A lot of work was done by hand to get the Nemesis to fit and it stems from the mangy mutt's love of Halo. He's been playing for 14 years, so he wanted to do something truly unique and different. Plus, there's only one real Halo Airsoft replica on the market, the Chrono Blaster. And let's just say, it's less than reputable when it comes to stock internals. So building his own was the next best thing. Plus, having a version 2 gearbox over the Chrono Blaster's proprietary gearbox opens up tons of internal upgrade options. Plus, he gets to run this at his local CQB arenas, where it stands out even more from the common M4s and high kappas. As for how much it cost, you're looking at about $400. Two donors, some parts, and some handiwork is all that was needed to show off the Mangy Mutt skills, and I think it came out beautifully. I really do like seeing hard work pay off, especially when it turns out to be a one-of-a-kind product like this one. Someone made a dream a reality, and now it sits pretty at the top spot for this countdown. And I hope you appreciate that. But that's it for the return of the Airsoft Top Series. Of course, I've got a whole lot more on the way for future episodes, but if there's a type of platform you think I need to make a countdown for right now, then let me know in the comments down below. Or just tell me what your favorite build was out of the ranking. The owners will be seeing the comments for sure, so let them know what you liked about their builds. For future countdowns, just be sure to watch the US Airsoft Facebook and Instagram. That's where I host the submission polls where you can make your submissions for the next episodes. I know a lot of people want to get themselves into the Airsoft Top Series and I don't want to leave anybody out, so keep an eye out for the submissions and then you'll just need to follow the instructions. It's usually very, very simple stuff. Of course, a big shout out goes to the Airsoft Heretics group for hosting a submission poll, along with all the new US Airsoft channel members like Who, Mink Henzi, Neko Gentia, and everyone else you see on your screen right now. We passed up 40 channel members a couple days ago, and I really appreciate everyone for making that happen. All new channel members get exclusive perks in the very next video, along with knowing what video will be coming out next and other great perks. So why not join up with them to get your name on the list now? Seriously, anyone who becomes a channel member is greatly appreciated because it's the best way to support the channel. But until that next video drops from the city of Dallas, Texas, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time.